Hello everybody, welcome back to episode two of my series on Hoka shoes. So last week we talked about the Clifton 7, which is right here. Um, if you haven't watched that, I'll link that video up in the uh, cards above. But this week we're going to be talking about the Clifton Edge, which is a little bit different, more performance oriented compared to the Clifton 7. Uh, so if you guys want to catch all my series on all the Hoka shoes, make sure you guys subscribe and hit that bell notification to uh, get notified when I do post the new videos, which is going to be weekly. Um, for this series. All right, so kind of diving in, we have these two shoes right here, the Clifton Edge and then the Clifton 7. Um, there are a couple differences and then there are a couple similarities we'll be talking about between these two shoes. And for this video, I'm gonna be comparing a lot. So it does help to watch that um, Clifton 7 video that I posted last week. So basically we're looking at the, almost the same stack height for uh, females. I think it's one millimeter difference. So one millimeter less in this shoe than it is in the Clifton. So we have a 29 in the heel for men, and then it's a five millimeter drop, so that means 24 millimeters in the forefoot. And then for women, it's actually gonna be, I think it was like, it was 26 in the heel, and then also gonna be, uh, what's that, but yeah, 21 for the forefoot, or from heel to the, to the toe. Um, so those are gonna be very similar in between the Clifton uh, 7 and then the Clifton Edge right here. Um, I feel like the mesh is similar, but not quite the same in these two shoes. I'm kind of going out of order here. Normally I think I talk about the midsole next, but I really wanted to address, I guess, the heel counters in these guys. Very similar in both shoes. So look at the back of both of these guys, very similar. Um, they both have this piece right here at the very top that kind of curves away from the uh, Achilles, kind of relief stress on that Achilles as well. Um, the, Clifton Edge though, if you look at inside the shoe right here, I'll, I'll put something up on the screen for you guys. Uh, we have a little bit more padding in the heel back there than you do in the Clifton. Um, it is a higher price point shoe, as we'll get into a little bit later, 160 for the Clifton Edge and then 130 for the Clifton. So uh, you kind of expect maybe some extra quality in the build right there as well. Um, but the main reason I feel like the Clifton Edge is a higher price point there's gonna be a couple of reasons. I mean, the first, going back in, or going into the midsole now, we have their more, like, I guess they're fancier, more proprietary, um, like rebounding, but lightweight foam in the Clifton Edge for this midsole. Um, I believe it's actually this greenish foam right here. It's not this pink or this orange stuff. I'll talk about the pink and orange foam in just a sec here. Um, but the Clifton has their standard EVA foam, which is just their less dense EVA foam. But this guy has that fancier uh, EVA foam because it gives it a little more pop in the shoe, a little bit lighter weight, a little more bounce and spring in that shoe. Um, when we're looking at the Meta Rocker in these two shoes, we have the Clifton. They both have the Meta Rocker, so they both have that similar rocking um, shape or ro that rock off the toes and that uh, quick kind of uh, toe off that you get with that extra curvature in the toe. But this one has a more aggressive uh, Meta Rocker, so from the heel to the toe, you got that. Rocker, this is just a lot more aggressive, kind of pops you up a little bit quicker, uh, a little more responsive as well than the Clifton 7 right here. Um, when we're looking at the heel, obviously, as you guys can see, is quite a bit different back here. They claim it's gonna be good for people who heel strikes, uh, who heel strikes, um, who heel strike, and uh, kind of gives you a smoother transition into the forefoot or toe, um, just by having that extra piece right there to kind of give you a little more time to kind of come down off that foot. Uh, I don't, I'm not a heavy heel striker and I actually really enjoyed this, uh, the shoe or the, like, I guess even if you get tired, if you're going downhill a lot too, that heel can help quite a bit. But I'm a pretty heavy forefoot striker and I don't really even notice the heel all that much. Maybe it feels a little bit different than the Clifton right here. Um, but the whole shoe does feel pretty different from the Clifton in general. Uh, but kind of moving on, let's talk about the um, bottom of the shoes. So we got, uh, or the um, outsole as we would call it and this, Clifton Edge has their EVA rubber blend. So it's the, they say high, I think a high abrasion or something, um, but it actually does, it's not gonna be as durable as rubber. Which is be, I'm gonna be straight with you guys and uh, just tell you, this is not gonna be as durable as rubber, but there's a good amount of it underneath there and it is a performance shoe, typically with performance shoes, you're not looking for the durability out of them to just crank out miles. You're looking for a more performance oriented shoe that's gonna give you a lot more at the time that you need it um, for quite quicker days and stuff like that. Overall though, um, as I'll kind of get into maybe at the end, I feel like this is actually a pretty good everyday trainer as well. But let me kind of dive right into this outsole a little bit. So yeah, you got standard rubber in the, all the high abrasion areas in the Clifton 
uh, 7 right here, but then this one just has pretty much that almost a full midsole of the um, EVA blended with the rubber. So um, that also I feel like gives it a little bit more rigidity to the shoe or a little bit more um, stiffness and like kind of responsiveness out of this, this shoe as well. It's just having that rubberized EVA foam. So um, another thing to keep in mind there, that's, it's, it's weird because the, the Clifton and this aren't too much different in terms of like stack height and all that. So it's like, how, does, how do they get that extra responsiveness out of the shoe? And it's all gonna be, I think, in that midsole mainly. Uh, but now kind of moving on to the upper mesh. We've got a, uh, they say it's embo embossed with, uh, which pretty much just means they put it over top of the standard mesh with, uh, they put this EVA kind of mesh over it. So um, it's kind of like this weird shell as I kind of show you guys up on the screen but just really mainly in the toe areas where I'm seeing it. So you got that. Um, they both have gusseted tongues, so, and they're very similar gusseted tongues, so um, that's another similarity that these two shoes have. I feel like the Clifton Edge actually runs a little bit wider, in my opinion, um, just from the upper mesh compared to the Clifton 7. Um, and then, yeah, the in, so if we're looking into the insole area slash sock liner, it's a glued down in the Clifton 7, where in the, uh, sorry, the Clifton Edge, it's glued down. Um, where the Clifton 7, it's actually, you can still remove it and everything like that. So I've been sticking my insoles in here because of my plantar fascia issues. Um, still great shoe for plantar fascia, I feel like, um, but I do like to put my insoles in here, but I can't take out my insole or my sock liner um, unless I actually, <laughs> so I can't take the salad unless I rip it out and remove all the glue. So I didn't want to do that, so I just kind of stick it right into there. and. Yeah, I mean, the workout you guys actually saw me doing in the Clifton Edge uh, with Pat was actually, I, uh, I think I got a six by 800, it was my first workout back. So it was a six by 800 at uh, threshold pace with 30 seconds rest. And this shoe did like spectacular in that. And we also had a little bit of that, like the uneven ground kind of trail single track part on that course. And it did uh, stellar in that as well too. Very stable feeling, very wide on the bottom too. Uh, fits the insoles, in my opinion, pretty nice. Uh, way better than the Clifton 7 actually fits insoles. So if you wanted to wear insoles and you're kind of like, I don't know which hoka to go with, this might be a good option. But keep in mind, this is supposed to be, or supposed to be, supposed to be a performance oriented shoe. Uh, but I would use it for an everyday trainer. Um, like it's still got a lot of cushion. It's still got that massive stack height. So it's gonna protect your foot really well. Uh, very neutral shoe though. So no stability really um, in this shoe. So if you do overpronate, kind of like I do, um, insoles might be something to look at, or um, it does have a wider base though, so it might help a little bit with stability, but it's not really a stability shoe. Um, not gonna give you even as much stability as the Clifton 7 would. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on the Clifton Edge versus the Clifton 7. And yeah, that price point's gonna be 160 is 100, 130, so it's gonna be a $3 difference. But yeah, if you guys wanna check that out, I'll link all the, uh, places to buy them in the descriptions below. If you want to buy them from Runner's Roost, I'll link that in there. We do, they do ship to you and everything too. We have an online store. Uh, you guys can check that out. Or I link like Amazon links and everything I can, all the links I can find um, down there. If you're in the Colorado area, stop by uh, your closest Runner's Roost to pick that up. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be everything on those two guys. If you guys want to catch those other, um, other videos and all these Hoka shoes, then definitely hit that subscribe button, the bell notification right next to it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys next time.